how do you learn math from the ground up? From the very beginning, where do you start? How many hours a day should you study? What sections should you go over? How do you do it? What's the best way to learn mathematics if you're starting from nothing? The problem with this question is that it really depends on how much time you have and what level of mathematics you're at. So in this video, I'm going to give you two different starting points and some advice on how to actually learn mathematics. This video was motivated by an email I received from a subscriber here on the channel. I'm going to start this video by briefly reading the email in its entirety, it's not long, and then doing my best to answer it. If you have any advice for this person, please leave a comment in the comment section below. I like this email because the person reminds me of myself. This person pretty much is starting their math journey when I started mine. Okay, I'm going to open up the email here. It's in my email. And the person's name is Abdulwahab. And the subject is learning math from the ground up. Hi, Math Sorcerer. I'm Abdulwahab from the Middle East. Think of you for your videos, words of encouragement, and being supportive. I came to you today. Hopefully, you give me advice on how to start to learn math again after life punched me. I'm 24 now. How would you or me to learn math again so I can be better prepared to take the SAT and get a degree in math? I know it's going to take longer than a year to learn math up to the college level, but I'm going to take it step by step for the next six months. I will try to take it and get a great score. So where should I start and how should I deal with wasting of my time? Thank you. So this is a multi-part question. Let me just start by addressing the SAT question. So as for the SAT, this is something that I personally never took. I never took the SAT. I didn't finish high school. I got a GED. So that's something I can't really comment on. I did take the GRE, which is very similar. It's actually administered by the same company. And for that, I recommend workbooks. So I'm going to recommend just an SAT workbook from Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description and you can just get any of them or I'll put a link to one that's highly rated. Definitely get some type of workbook for the SAT and I think that's the best way to prepare. As far as learning math up to college level, that's what I want to focus on because I think that is going to help you more. It says you're from the Middle East. I don't know if you're located in the Middle East or in the US. I do know that in the US, as long as you have a GED, which is basically like a high school equivalency certificate, you can go to a local college and you can start studying mathematics. That's what I did. And that's how I was able to go to college without taking the SAT. So for learning math, you have a couple choices. You can watch free videos on the internet. You can just search YouTube for videos. I have over 8,000 videos here on the channel. But the problem with that is they're all disorganized and it's hard to find you know, exactly which one to watch next. So that's an option. Another option is courses. There's all kinds of learning websites you can sign up for. Um, there's courses you can take online. I have courses. They're on my website, mathsorcer.com. I would recommend my college algebra course. Just go to my website, mathsorcer.com. That course will take you from the very beginning and kind of guide you through. It's got you know exercises with solutions and videos. It's more than enough to prepare you. If you actually went through that whole course, you would be an algebra monster, you'd be super ready for whatever is next. I mean, there's a lot of math in that course. But I think even better than courses, and even though I have courses and I want you to buy my course, even better than courses are books. I think books are better because books, there's something about having a math book in your hands that it's just amazing. You can feel it, you can touch it, and it's just wonderful. So because you're 24 and I pretty much turned 24 right when I started college. I'm going to talk about where I started because you're probably in the same place as me. It's just very similar. It's a very similar situation to mine. I started with a course called Intermediate Algebra. And the book I'm going to recommend in this video is one that I think I talked about it once, maybe briefly a long time ago. 
It's actually for college students. It even says it in the title. It's called Intermediate Algebra for College Students, and it's the one by Angel. Okay, so this is an intermediate algebra book for college students. So if you're going to college and it's been a while since you've seen mathematics, or maybe you just weren't very good at math when you were in high school, this is the book for you. That's, that's the target audience of this book. If you think about it, if you go to high school and you do really well in high school, you're not going to start with intermediate algebra. You're probably going to start in college algebra, trig, or maybe even calculus if you were like super awesome in high school. But if you weren't super awesome in high school or if you didn't finish or if it's been a while, this is generally a really good starting point for people. This book is really good because it has great examples, it has a modern layout, it has answers to the odd numbered exercises, and you can smell it. <laughs> so that makes it fun. Plus the fact that it says for college students is probably going to make you feel a little bit better. It's like, okay, I am in college and I'm learning math, but it's really basic. So you shouldn't feel ashamed that you have to you know, start at this level. I actually started at the level before this, but I was able to take a, a combined course where I did like the pre-algebra and then the intermediate algebra. And I went from there. Um, mathematics was not my major. I just had to take it because I wanted to get a computer science degree. And I ended up liking it after taking a ton of classes. So mathematics for me was an accident. So yeah, awesome book. Now, if you feel that your mathematics is pretty good, you're thinking, okay, intermediate algebra. I mean, I know basic algebra. I know how to add rational expressions. I can solve simple equations. You know, I've got some experience. I've seen the quadratic equation before. I know what that is. You know, if, you've, if you've been exposed to algebra at some point in your life, Okay, if you've seen the quadratic equation, um, if you've done some factoring, you know, if, you, if you've done some basic algebra and you've had that, then I do recommend starting with college algebra because I feel like college algebra books, they contain more knowledge and they just move a little bit quicker and I think it's going to work better. Okay, and the one I recommend is the one that I've used to teach in the past. I've taught dozens of college classes uh, with this book, not this particular edition, but this one is College Algebra Essentials. I'm recommending this one because this one is less expensive than the regular college algebra and it pretty much has everything you need and i'll leave links in the description of this video to both of these books in case you want to check them out so you can click the links and then look for used copies uh, this is a used copy i got for just a few dollars so excellent book and it covers more math or more advanced math than the intermediate algebra book so you've decided on getting a course or a book or both right you could do both you can do a course or a book. By the way, if you buy my course, this is a great book. This this book goes along with the course. So if you get this book and my course, uh, mathsorcerer.com, my college algebra course through, through the link there, this is a, a good book for that course. It follows the course fairly well. Um, so it should follow the sections and stuff. It goes along really well. So once you have a course and you have a book, um, if you're taking a course, obviously you just follow the course. If you decide just to get the book though, just pick a starting point, start from the very first chapter, sit down with you know a piece of paper, uh, a pencil or a pen, I prefer pencil, or you can get a fancy pen or something, you know, if, if it makes you feel good. Whatever makes you feel good, try to have a distraction-free environment and tell yourself you're gonna do some math every day. Now, how much math you should do, I think that depends on how much time you have. A lot of people will say, I'm gonna do two hours of math every day, and that's okay, but I think the real problem with that, and this is just the problem I've had with that in my life, is that it's hard, you know, like sometimes you wake up and you don't want to do anything. You're just tired, you're burnt out, you've been studying for three days in a row. The last thing you want to do is do math for two hours. So I think it's a better approach to say, I'm going to do at least one problem every day. And I think that's an easier way for people to get started with mathematics. Because if you tell yourself you're going to do, you know, at least one problem every day, you're more likely to sit down and do it than if you tell yourself you're going to do two hours of math every day. It's just the way we're wired because you're not going to have motivation every day. Some days you won't have that motivation. And so you need to be able to work when you're not motivated. And the easiest way to do that is to tell yourself you're going to do at least one problem because you're more likely to say, hey, well, your mind says at least one problem. So, okay, so that might only take you 15 minutes. In your mind, you're saying, oh, one problem, I can be done in 10 minutes. You sit down, you do a problem, and you feel good. You know, hey, I, I factored that equation, I factored that polynomial, or I solved that quadratic equation, or, or I graphed that parabola, and my graph looks pretty good. I did it right. So, you might want to do another one. So, it gets you going. Once you get going, in whatever it is you're trying to do, a lot of times you'll keep going. Not always. 
Not always. Sometimes you'll do a problem and you'll say, I just can't think today. And you'll put it aside and you'll go do something else and you'll take a break and you'll take a, a mental break that day. But at least you did something. At least you did something positive towards your life, positive towards your mathematics learning experience. And I think that's that's the thing. You want to look back on every single day of your math journey and you want to say, today was a positive day. Today, I did something productive. And I think that's what makes a difference. And that's how you learn and that's how you grow. So do something every day and tell yourself you're going to do at least one problem. And if, and if you do that, I, I, I want to say I guarantee you, but I, it's going to work. You're going to get so much better. If you do at least one problem a day, you're going to get better. It makes a big difference. So that's my advice. Um, I, I think you're going to do great. I think the fact that you're thinking about going back and you're going to take the steps to do that is great. Um, yeah, it's never too late. It's never too late, my friend. It is never too late to start. It really isn't. And a lot of people will say, you know, what's the point of, you know, going to college and stuff? There's no guarantees. And there are no guarantees in life. There's no guarantees no matter what. A lot of life is about luck. But there's this quote, and I forgot who said it. Someone famous did. I should know because I just read it. Uh, it says, I find the harder I work, the more luck I have. And, and, I, and I think that's true. I was thinking about that last night. I was having a, a conversation with a friend about luck and life and how luck plays a big role in how we succeed in life. And, you know, the harder you work, the more luck you have. I, I, you know, the more opportunities that open up. So keep working hard and good luck on your journey. If anyone else has advice for, and let me just check the name again, because it's a very long name, Abdul Wahab, uh, please leave a comment in the comment section below. If you found any value in this content, uh, consider hitting subscribe. If you want to, you don't have to, but if you want to subscribe, I post math content and other related content. Sometimes I'll post like investing advice or physics stuff or you know sometimes fitness but mostly mostly it's mathematics uh, on this channel math and learning type stuff if you want to learn math i do have courses they're on my website mathsorcer.com what else oh i have an instagram the real math sorcerer so check all of that out if you're into fitness if you if you want to get in shape work out i do now have a fitness channel the fitness sorcerer just google the fitness sorcerer you can find uh, my fitness content there which i am slowly building. It's like fitness, product reviews, and stuff like that. So anyways, I hope this has helped someone out there. Learn math from the ground up. What you should take away from this video are the following things. Just a recap of the most important points. I think it's important. To learn math, you can either just wander aimlessly around the internet and search for videos, which is okay. I've done that. Buy a course or get some books. And I'll leave links to all of that in the description. And the key takeaway, again, is do at least one problem a day. I hope this has been helpful to someone out there who feels like it's too late or, or you know, they feel like, you know, they don't know where to get started. Just get started and go do some mathematics.